Hi, in this video, we are going to analyze the Tavares of Hanoi problem. We will discuss what exactly is a Tavares of Hanoi problem and we will do the time complexity analysis for the Tavares of Hanoi problem. Some basic background knowledge of algorithm analysis is required to follow this tutorial. You should at least know what is a big O notation and its interpretation. So this is a typical setting of the Tavares of Hanoi problem. You can see that there are three pegs A, B and C and in peg A we have got three disks. They are arranged in, in such a manner that smaller disks are placed over larger disks. And the Tavares of Hanoi problem is to transfer all the disks from peg A to peg B and, in, and there is an interesting condition. There are, there are a couple of interesting conditions which you need to follow. Condition number one is that you can transfer only one disk at a time. And uh, condition number two is that you should never put a bigger disk over a smaller one. <clears throat> and you can, use, um, you can use any of these specs for moving. That means you can move uh, from peg A to peg B, you can move from peg A to C, and in, in, in any order you can utilize all the pegs. In fact, uh, in fact, you cannot solve this problem if you are only given with two pegs. So you have got one intermediate peg always uh, to, to, to have your intermediate moves. Now let us try to do this problem for the uh, arrangement of three disks. So here uh, we are given with initially we are having three disks at peg A. That means our n is 3, n equal to 3. And we want to transfer the disks one by one. So let me show you how we can do this. So you can actually transfer this disk from here to here. That is a smaller one. And we cannot put this disk over this disk because, because of the condition. So now we can move this here. And then move this smaller one over the larger disk. And then you can put this here. And then you can put this over here. And then the second disk can be transferred here and the third disk can be transferred to here. So now you are successful in, uh, in, in transferring all the disks from peg A to peg B. Now the analysis of this problem is about finding the time required to transfer uh, the disks from a particular from, from A to B in this case. Now, uh, we need to have an estimate of the time required and we know that the time required will be proportional to the time will be proportional to the number of moves that we are making number of moves so in 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 our in our example we took uh, we took an example where the number of disks was 3 number of disks was 3 and if you are able to rewind this video once again you can you can observe that the number of moves that we made was 7 so we moved we we made 7 moves to uh, to transfer all the disks from a to b following the conditions now we want to have a general estimate we want to estimate this for any given value of n that means we want to actually find what is what is t of n and we know that t of n is proportional to the number of moves number of moves that you make and we want to establish a relation uh, between n and t of n before relating n and t of n n and t of n we can we can study about one more setting so which is illustrated here uh, so in this setting we have got four disks we have got four disks and at peg a and we want to transfer uh, them all to peg b so uh, we want to estimate the time required to transfer these disks to peg b so here in this case in this case n equal to 4 and we want to have an estimate of what is t of 4 
So in our earlier example, we had three disks that is n was equal to 3 and uh, we uh, we have identified that it required seven moves it required seven moves to transfer all the disks from peg a to peg b so if we assume one unit of time one unit of time each for one move then we can say that t of 3 is equal to 7 now to estimate what is t of 4, we are not going to transfer the disks one by one and count the moves, but rather we will use this, this information, that is we know that for, for n is equal to 3, we know that t of 3 is equal to 7. This information can be used for estimating the value of t of 4. So let us now do a careful analysis. Now to transfer all the four disks from peg A to peg B, the critical step is that we are able to transfer the largest disk from peg A to peg B. So before we can do that, we must transfer all the other three disks from here to peg C. So this is something uh, which we have, this is something similar to the, the example that we have discussed uh, as a first example that is transferring three disks from one peg to another. The only difference here is that we are transferring it from peg A to peg C using peg B as an intermediate peg. So the selection of pegs doesn't make uh, any difference to the number of movements that, that is required for this uh, conversion. So, uh, so we can easily say that the con conversion from setting one to setting two will require seven moves and now uh, it is quite possible that we can move the largest disk from uh, peg a peg a to peg b so so uh, so for conversion from setting two that is illustrated in setting three uh, so conversion from setting two to setting three will take one move and now now uh, we want to transfer uh, these three disks in peg c to peg b and now it is again the same case it is again the it is again the case which we have discussed so that is here we need to transfer the three disks from peg c to peg b utilizing peg a as an intermediate peg so the conversion from setting three to setting four will again require seven moves so totally it will it will be like seven plus one plus seven that is 15 so we can say that t of four equal to seven that is seven is nothing but t of three plus one plus again t of three so so that becomes two into t of three plus one now to generalize this for uh, for any count of disks that is n number of disks we can say that we can generalize this equation as uh, by saying t of n t of n equals 2 into t of n equals 2 into t of n minus 1 t of n minus 1 plus 1 so this is the critical uh, or this is the recurrence relation uh, which we need to solve to find the relation between t of n and n. Let us now solve the recurrence relation by substitution method. Now we can see that uh, the recurrence is given by t of n is equal to 2, two into t of n minus 1 plus 1. Now we can, we can actually substitute for t of n minus 1 here. That means we can write this as 2 into t of n minus 1 can be written as 2 into t of that is 2 into t of n minus 2 2 into t of n minus 2 plus 1 so plus 1 now uh, that becomes again I can uh, 
we can simplify it as 2 square into t of n minus 2 and then we can write plus 1 plus 2 here. Now we can we can again uh, once more we can substitute uh, substitute for t of n minus two here and then we'll get this as uh, two square into two into t of n minus three plus one plus one plus two. Now this can be simplified as two cube into t of n minus 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4 now we can observe that here this this value here is 1 plus 2 plus 4 which is nothing but uh, 7 so we can observe that when we have 2 raised to 3 here we have uh, 7 that is 2 raised to 3 minus 1 here uh, so for generalizing this we can say that this is equal to 2 raised to k into t of n minus k plus we can say that this is 2 raised to k minus 1 now we need to make an important observation here is that uh, when this term becomes t of 1 when this term will become this term will finally become t of 1 it means that we have only one more disk to be moved from a to b this is going to be the situation so uh, this requires only one more move that means our t of 1 is going to be 1 so this is an important observation which we need to uh, make to solve this recurrence relation so when this term becomes when this term becomes t of 1 it means that it means that n minus k a becomes 1 and then we can say that k becomes n minus 1 so uh, our next step is that we need to put we need to put k as n minus 1 in our in our relation that is we need to put k as n minus 1 so our equation will become like this 2 raised to n minus 1 into t of 1 plus 2 raised to n minus 1 minus 1 now this becomes this becomes 2 into 2 raised to n minus 1 minus 1 and that becomes 2 raised to n minus 1 so finally uh, the value of t of n is going to be 2 into n minus 1 and this is uh, our final answer that is we are saying that the number of the time the time complexity is 2 raised to n minus 1 and uh, and the time complexity um, when expressed in terms of big O notation we say that this is this is big O of this is big O of 2 raised to n because we are not bothered about constants like 1 so we say that it is big O of 2 raised to n so so hope you understood how uh, we are able to solve uh, the time complexity analysis for the towers of hanoi problem uh, thanks for listening this is joe from learn at home signing off